The symbols and the leaders change, but Germany's maniacal urge to impose its will on others continues from generation to generation. five years, this madness has cost the world more than 20 million killed, more than 60 million wounded, more than 200 million made homeless. This does not include the untold millions that died of disease resulting from war, or the billions upon billions of dollars worth of property destroyed. Nor does this include the grief, the anguish, the misery, the terror that the world has suffered due to the Germans' insane passion to enforce their rule upon their neighbors. This passion for conquest reached its hysterical climax when Adolf Hitler enthroned himself as God and the German Fuhrer. What fantastic dreams was this humorless man dreaming as he stood at Nuremberg and looked down on his fanatic followers? In the Middle Ages, a plague of slavery descended on the world. Out of the wilds of Mongolia came a mighty army of fierce horsemen, led by Genghis Khan. Burning, looting, pillaging, the barbarian hordes swept across Asia and Eastern Europe. Genghis Khan conquered most of the world of the 13th century. Adolf Hitler was determined to outdo him and conquer all of the world of the 20th. Set up at Munich was an institute devoted to the little-known science of geopolitics, vaguely defined as the military control of space. Germany's leading geopolitician, a former general, Karl Haushofer, was head man. Here was gathered together more information about your hometown than you yourself know. To the German geopolitician, the world is not made up of men and women and children who live and love and dream of better things. It is made up of only two elements, labor and raw materials. The geopolitician's job was to transform Hitler's ambition to control these elements into cold, hard reality. On their map, our planet is neatly divided into land and water. Water forms three quarters of the Earth's surface, land only one quarter. And in that one quarter of the Earth's surface lies the world's wealth, all its natural resources. manpower. Control the land and you control the world. That was Hitler's theory. This all-important land, the geopoliticians now break up into two areas. One, the Western Hemisphere, which, together with Australia and all the islands of the world, including Japan, comprises one-third of the land area. The other area, which consists of Europe, Asia, and Africa, makes up the other two-thirds. This supercontinent, which they call the World Island, is not only twice as large as the rest of the land area, but also includes seven-eighths of the world's population. The heart of this world island comprises Eastern Europe and most of Asia. This they call the heartland, which just about coincides with the old empire of Genghis Khan. 
Hitler's step-by-step -step plan for world conquest can be summarized this way. Conquer Eastern Europe, and you dominate the heartland. Conquer the heartland, and you dominate the world island. Conquer the world island, and you dominate the world. That was a dream in Hitler's mind as he stood at Nuremberg. Hitler! Sieg! 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 With pagan pageantry, the district leaders from all over Germany swore personal allegiance to him, hypnotized with the belief that they were members of a master race. This film will deal with act one of the Nazi bid for world power, the most fantastic play in all recorded history. Hitler had seen Hirohito grab off Manchuria and other territory from the Chinese. He had watched Mussolini get away with the rape of Ethiopia. He had seen the democratic world look the other way while these illegal aggressions were going on. And he smiled. For collective action to enforce peace, the only weapon he had to fear had broken down. It was time now for the Nazis to start crossing borders. It was time for Hitler to put his plan into action. And what was he waiting for? He was waiting to soften up his victims, keep them from uniting. For the softening up process, he sent his agents all over the world disguised as tourists, students, and commercial travelers. Payoff men like Ribbentrop came too, to bribe, threaten, and form local fascist parties such as de Grel and his Rexist party in Belgium, such as La Roque and his Cross of Fire party in France, Henlein in Czechoslovakia, Seiss Inquart and his National Socialists in Austria. In Britain, Sir Oswald Mosley offered himself to the people as a Hitler with an Oxford accent. In other words, I'm told that Hitler is mad. Well, I've got another view myself. Until the day when they would make easy Hitler's actual invasion, these subversive fascist organizations provoked riots and rebellions, creating scenes like these in France. Scenes like these in Belgium. And where do you think this is? Right in Madison Square Garden, USA. This is Fritz Kuhn, leader of the German-American Bund, hiding behind the American flag, but taking his orders from Berlin and copying the methods of Berlin. That was the softening up process outside Germany. 